last one. I think I put an extra zero in. So it ended up, it ended up just meandering around the first word the entire time. But it sounds real nice. <laughs> oh, I see. So over the course of the note, you can change the the pulling back. That's a weight. That's a weight that can change mm -hmm. as a function of time. Yeah. And this was that's a I mean, is a couple of lines in Sal uh, Sal one. I wrote it in to put that um, as a function that the green star parameter uses. Um, so you know, da like I said, Daniel Soli was uh, really helpful. Um, I haven't had some great discussions with him helping me come up with my design philosophy for this. And uh, he's been using Granny Plus, and uh, he said that I could play an excerpt from something I've got, and he'd uh, like to say a couple words about it, too. Uh, my initial interest in Granny was to uh, use it not so much as a granular synthesis instrument, but more as a means of uh, algorithmic mixing. So uh, the notion of being able to have this parameter linkage, or having the ex accessibility of functions for each parameter, uh, so I could actually fiddle with the knobs, so to speak, uh, during the uh, the duration of a granny call uh, was very appealing. So this, this excerpt is actually, uh, it's a, a lizard growling. Um, I did some transpositions and time stretching previous to uh, throwing it at granny and then the, basically just simple calls, uh, there's a, I created a list with I, I don't know the number, but many uh, with many different envelopes in it uh, that were I, I deemed suitable panning envelopes, and then many different suitable amplitude envelopes. So it has this bank of uh, of shapes that I find uh, useful, and this is using very long uh, grain durations, uh, some between I think they're mostly between a second and maybe up to ten or eleven seconds. So very different uh, approach, but. It generates some interesting things sometimes. It's all for that. Excerpt of uh, a piece I'm working on too. You'll notice uh, some of these techniques that I I implemented in Grain Plus in this piece. Um, I left everything on here dry so you can hear uh, the effect. You can hear what's going on a little better. So I didn't put reverb and stuff on.
and that was uh, that was all created using Gradient Plus, except for I think um, one pitch down, uh, like the accents, there were the low accents. I think I just hit a table with a mallet and pitched it down. That was just concrete. So, what was the other sound source for that one? Uh, so there's the Velcro, um, that was all the um, There was kind of the bird song and the um, circuit bent instruments that made those a kind of colorful flourishes. Uh, there was yeah, stomping, those were like the low accents. I also, um, I, I did another thing with convolution. I made these grain clouds and involved them with gong sounds to get like little low rumbles. Um, and I think that's all that's in there. How many lines of code was that? Um, so I, I basically took this, uh, which one was it? Um, the the regranularization example, like the Velcro sound. Uh, I basically took that, chopped it up. So that, that it was itself one called the Grand Plus. Chopped it up uh, into sections and kind of orchestrated it out. Um, maybe five calls of Granny total. But it, it wasn't a black box where I hit go and did it. I chopped up that one file and orchestrated it out and took a couple pieces and repeated them. But uh, I don't think more than four or five call screening plus. Um, so, uh, winding down, but uh, I guess I want to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of what I've done. Uh, the strengths are that you have envelopes for all the grain parameters, lets you control panning, reverb, density, or duration, all that. It's flexible, you can write simple style code to expand existing functionality. Parameter linkage lets the, um, lets the different parameters know about each other, it lets you uh, mold these clouds of sound into something more focused if you'd like. Um, it's backwards compatible, you only use the parameters you need, all the other ones just defend, retain the default granny behavior. Now the weaknesses, um, the functions that are called over the length of an individual grain, they need to be updated at every sample. So those uh, slow it down a lot. So if you, um, you're always going to have an amplitude envelope over a grain, but if you add panning, it's going to make it take twice as long to run. So you have to be a little careful with those. If you want to make a 10 minute sound file, you might have to go get a cup of coffee. <laughs> but other, other, other than those ones, um, it doesn't make it run significantly slower. Um, and, uh, this is not so much a weakness, but it's not always necessary. Granny's a fine instrument. It's really wonderful. Um, you, you don't always need control beyond the spray paint approach. It's, it's suitable for a lot of different things. But this just allows you to take it to the next level and to implement things you'd find uh, cumbersome, if not impossible, with the existing program. Uh, last weakness is uh, I don't have uh, more than a stereo setup on my, own, my uh, computer, so I haven't put in um, three and four and five track um, output yet. That's all built into um, Loxig, and um, which is the spatialization part of um, of it. So uh, that's there for Granny. I just need to update a little bit to be able to take advantage of this. Um, so f future work, I think places I've been uh, thinking of expanding it and looking to do more work and. Uh, I'm looking for input on this too, what you guys think. Um, a lot of these things are kind of outside of my initial design intent. I didn't want to just go adding a bunch of features and um, adding things I thought would be cool. I had this specific idea to expand you know, functionality to every envelope and add the function to the parameter linkage. But I think what would be really cool is updating the way you do grain density control, maybe allowing it to be syn synchronous as well, uh, linking the grain density to the duration of grains. Um, like I said, more than two channel output. Um, there's some, some new code that does update spatialization better, uh, in a different way than Loxig, and uh, I've been looking into including that. So that would actually include Doppler effects and, and those kind of things uh, built into it. Um, then like bonus features, things I think would be really cool, but uh, you know, it was definitely outside my intent to just go adding a bunch of things in. I really went to this focus thing to make it more flexible what I already did. Uh, filters, uh, per grain filter would be great. Uh, Something to, do, something to do convolution with grains of sound would also be good. Um, so um, to recap, you know, I mentioned common music grace, you know, how and uh, you guys should definitely take a look at it. It's a really fantastic, uh, flexible way of working with things. We got the original granny program, and to get your hands on Granny Plus, uh, give me a ring or email me. Uh,
I'm going to post it up on the email software page as well and send out an email about that so you can all have a link to it. Um, and any questions, suggestions? Did you go back one slide? Yeah, I'll open on this. So how are the parameters how do you use the parameters so those are not inside of those functions? Or so, I, don't know, I mean, I know what it means, but I don't think that's what it works. Okay, so in the code, the way it works is um, if you give it an argument for parameter linkage, it'll call one function before it updates all the other ones for the grants. And in that function, you can say, you know, set duration equal to this random number, uh, set pitch, pitch equal to some form of basin duration. And then when you call those, you just use those values. So uh, it just it just lets you set things up front before it goes in and um, calls the function for each one. Oh, and that allows you to update the parameters that are running the uh, engine? No, it, it does this uh, between grains. So it does it before this, it starts rendering. Oh, okay. So it, it can do um, it can do whatever. So um, take an example, for example, the Velcro I played. Uh, that starts off with a lot of space between them and then moves to one continuous block of sound. So, so that's just another thing you can do. Yeah, but th that, that's already a feature of granular synthesis. Actually, that's a big aesthetic thing I think a lot of people think about when you're using this, like the ability to go between discrete time and a continuous 